So I'm, I'm trained a bit as a sociologist. I have a master's degree from the University of Sao Paulo in sociology. And uh, I wrote my master's thesis about the relationships between employers and their domestic workers, or their maids in Brazil and in the United States. And it was you know, a work um, with critical theory and analysis. And then I did this project, basically, um, you know, while uh, I was procrastinating on my master's thesis. Uh, and uh, it, it, it was born before that, but really I think it succeeded. Okay. Um, anyways, I think it really succeeded in building momentum in large part because I needed to procrastinate so much on that thesis. Um, but uh, ultimately, it's not exactly a work of sociology. I don't think I would, I would be recognized in sociology at this stage for, for what I'm doing. Um, and I'm not particularly invested in calling it art, uh, although I've gotten grants from a couple of arts organizations. It might be education, um, but it, I think I, I'm finding myself here at this panel in a fun way as a, as a practitioner of something that I have not particularly invested in uh, critical um, analysis or, or you know, my critical theory faculties in analyzing myself. So um, with that, I want to talk about this project from the perspective of a practitioner applying new technological tools um, and organizational frameworks to, to make this. So what do I do? Global Labs Project. Uh, 24 hours of, of continuous video of the daily life of 10 people from all over the world. Uh, so we capture their routines, their tasks, their struggles, their everyday experiences, because this is really the essence of how they understand their lives and how we can understand them. Uh, the idea initially was to show this in a video, excuse me, a video installation, the content of which is this 24 or 240 hours of uncut footage. So, um, um, so why do this? It's really about provoking people to rethink their relationship with the world. It's about inviting people to participate in the lives of others as intimate observers and really pushing the limits of not only technology but also international collaboration as a vehicle for social change. Um, so the participants, we've now just two weeks ago finished these 10 shoots. We started with a cable car driver, James, in San Francisco, a hip hop singer in Sao Paulo. Our third, and, and I was present for both of those two shoots. Um, the third shoot I did too, uh, it was done by a guy uh, who dropped out of an anthropology PhD program and moved to Malawi and uh, decided to propose this. The proposal went out to our collective, we're called the Global Lives Collective. We had raised a little bit of money and we sent some money to him in Malawi and he recorded 24 hours in the life of Edith with help from uh, a crew that came from the US and a crew in Malawi. So that's the if there. And this is an important member of our collective. His name is Elio Ishii. And he's a Japanese-Brazilian uh, filmmaker. He has his own little production studio. He was one of the directors of our Brazil shoot. And then he asked me one day in 2007, uh, David, I'm going to Japan to visit my wife's family. Can I do a shoot in Japan? Do you know anyone in Japan will help me? And I didn't, I'd never been to Japan. I didn't know anyone in Japan. And I said, I'm sure we can find someone. Um, and again, all volunteers. So, early this email, do you know a filmmaker or a photographer in Japan interested in social change? I wrote it in English. It came back to me two days later in Japanese. I still don't know who translated it. Um, we posted it all over the web. We were very specific. We wanted a co-director, producer, camera operator, photographer, production assistant, translator. We posted it in English and Japanese. And lo and behold, uh, 10 days later, we had more than 20 people who wanted to collaborate uh, as volunteers. And it was actually too many people. You don't want to follow someone around for 24 hours with a crew of 20. And so we turned a few people away. We took a lot of independent people uh, along with that. Uh, we collaborated with the United Nations University Media Studio, Temple University in Japan. Um, and we produced a really cool shoot there with a lot of different types of people. So this is a life story interview that we do the day or the week after. These are some of the subject selection criteria. So as a collective, we decided on this set of six criteria on how to pick these 10 people around the world. Um, this, is, this is what it looks like now. Green are the open slots. Or we just finished, actually. Red are the finished ones. So this was a big collaborative process. In the end, I was only present for 
three uh, of the ten shoots. Uh, we designed an installation to show this. It was a collaborative design by uh, architects from three different countries that put together. Um, it's showing at Yerba Buena Center for the Arts. Uh, that's going to be our world premiere from February to June of next year. Um, it took a minute to get these slides up, so I didn't get to the collab all the collaboration parts I wanted to talk about. Um, but I'll just close by mentioning our, our Facebook group. Uh, we've used to translate the Malawi shoot. This is the largest Chichewa la uh, language translation in the history of the Chichewa language, uh, done by our 2,000 members of our Facebook uh, Malawi group. Um, using the dot sub collaboration uh, collaborative translation tool. So I'll close with this slide. Um, you know, we're more than 400 volunteers from about 20 countries who put this together. We use the Creative Commons licenses. We're incorporated as a nonprofit organization, and we feel that we really communicate the ideas of the sharing economy uh, that made Wikipedia and Linux possible to these other fields of video and architecture, which tend to be very proprietary production oriented. And we really emphasize also that we give very talented professionals fulfilling creative opportunities, people who might not be enjoying their advertising or their MTV type work. Um, we've had people from MTV, from BBC, from NHK, all volunteer, take time out of their own lives to do this work. So um, my time is up, but if you have great questions, uh, like the one brought up by the moderator, like how can 10 people represent billions, uh, I think you should contribute to the upcoming issue of cultural analysis that's whole issue, all analyzing and deconstructing the Global Lives Project. Uh, 